Are we going to make sure the linkage works on this before we go and try putting the sumo on it? It goes down. That's a start. Went down on the buttons. Hey? Um, well, I pressed the button and it went down. Do you want to do it from the cab? So there's a the linkage there. Let's see the view from the cab. That's the view of the rear linkage from the cab. So uh, it's going to take two of us to put the sumo on. Got the links working, we just struggle a little bit with the depth control, getting it to stop where we want. Yeah, we're going to go to the field now and put it on. If it doesn't work, uh, we'll put it on the 936, I'll go on that instead. Sumo is still in the field where he left it yesterday when he had a problem with the fast track. This is where Andrew was levelling off yesterday. Uh, this hasn't been done. We had nine mil of rain last night which is a bit unfortunate anyway hopefully it's given blue skies today so hopefully it'll dry up a little bit but there's no wind at all we've got some spraying to do but it's a little bit tappy on top so we'll help him with this first before we go spraying the ones with the vc cabs you can put the cab at the back of the tractor where that weight block is to see exactly what you're doing to couple up you can kind of see the advantage now hold on Got it on, we're just going to check that it's not going to catch the back tyres when it's turned because it's quite close. Don't want to do another back tyre in. I think this one will be dearer than the fast track, being five times the size. No, it's all right, it goes further away when you turn actually. Go the other way. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, it gets close when you go that way. Um, can you not limit the height lift? No. We need to. Um, we'll drop it in the ground a bit, and we'll try and short the top link. Shorten that top link so it pulls these feet further away. Feet. Yeah, this is short it a lot. It's not even going to the ground, is it? Well. That's better now, we shorten that, change the pivot point on the link arm, pull this right away from the tyre. See what it does now. I think it's picked up a piece of rubber. Actually bringing up dry soil, which I didn't expect. It's going on a diagonal, but it's just far too rough bouncing over. So we're just going to try doing it the same way as uh, the spud drills were. This field was OSR stubble, drilled with wheat around two weeks ago, just short. You know, I've just come to have a look, check there's no slug damage. Well, if you look down here, there looks to be nothing growing. But if you look closely, we've got rows of wheat coming up there and up through here. And I'm struggling to find any sort of slug damage. Maybe that's had a tip took off it, but the wheat is just coming up quite nicely now underneath the OSR. If you look here, there's a little bit less leaf cover. You can see. I see a nice row there for me. Just down the middle there. So, pretty pleased. I sprayed this off probably two days earlier than I would have liked the OSR. I wanted to leave it feeding the slugs for as long as possible, but the way the weather was forecast, 
had to spray it but it still worked it's still got a bit of green on the osr so the slugs are still grazing that and leaving the wheat hopefully in another sort of four or five days the osr will be completely dead but the wheat will be strong enough to not bother getting munched a little bit by, by a slug this is a bit where it's particularly trashy and again it seems to be coming up well it doesn't really seem to be any sort of slug damage they'd normally graze underneath this this thatch if you will it may take a little bit but but i think i think it's still got similar plant numbers probably a little bit slower because the ground won't be as warm underneath but yeah i'm pleased because we put quite a lot of seed in this field didn't use much fuel but quite a lot of seed obviously all the sprays as well so it's already a significant investment but yeah it's coming up well but if you go and look at the gateway where we level some ruts off where it was like really black soil it looks totally different but it's just because you've got black soil next to the green and it's easy to see the rows snipped across the road to look at the barley coming up in the wheat stubble quite happy with that as well looks quite good bit of striping off the slugs there if you can see but it's out the woods now i don't think they can eat it anymore it's it's all there uh, it's all come up fast track is still on the low loadout we've not unloaded it yet we've just not had time because we're trying to get some drilling done the parts run as well at the dealership but we've not got time to pick them up because my dad's off this afternoon doing something and rob has gone down to barclay williams to pick up the parts for the 1694 and he's going to see massey dave as well tomorrow so he's having a couple of days off so there's just me and andrew at the moment really i've just sprayed this field now the headlands we dissed a little bit <laughs> just the famous manhole yeah we dissed the headlands a little bit so level off some tram lines with the spray we made rut spray in the osr last year but needs the spray is just cutting in a little bit but hopefully not too bad but was forecast over an inch of rain tomorrow it other feels drying up nicely then. so now the osr volunteers will die and hopefully the grass weed and the pre-emergent spray will then take over and hopefully just wheat will be growing in this field in a few weeks a bit like the field that i looked at this morning all being well that is Painting the fields yellow here now with the crystal of spray, putting that on as a pre-emergence. This is where it was beans, a couple of little volunteer beans popping up, as you can see. Um, it's a little bit tacky. It's good that the pre-emergence is going on wet soil, that makes it work really well. But we had like a tiny shower before and it's just wet at the top and it's just making where I'm traveling like pliable, so he's squashing the soil down which isn't good because if it doesn't dry before the inch of rain tomorrow it'll lie like puddles and look terrible but if we get an inch of rain tomorrow I won't get back on it till next week and I've got a bit of glyphosate mixed in with the pre-emergent spray so it needs to be on now and also I don't want weed starting to grow as well I'll jump off and I'll show you what I mean yeah so if you look at the soil we've obviously it's quite free draining very open but where I've driven on it because it's got quite a high clay content it's squoze it together because it's the consistency of plasticine and unless that dries before it next rains these will fill up with water and unfortunately i don't know whether it is going to dry enough it's bright sunshine now but i don't think it will it should have been sprayed yesterday really but i was leaving it as long as possible to make sure that we got a bit of a germination of any other weed seeds before drilling but also it forecasts not getting rain last night instead we got nine mil it just wasn't in the in the forecast whatsoever so in hindsight it should have been done yesterday afternoon instead of going to the plowing match but trusted the weather didn't i so never trust the weather you see on the window there it's starting to rain again and i'm not quite finished the field and i've got the one over there to do as well hopefully it's not going to come much don't think we'll get drilling today though this is where we direct drill for next door and it's just starting to poke through only just couple of days you should see nice green stripes and the spray in there you see before i do the birthday bumper i just must mention that yesterday i said the, the calendars are on the website they weren't in haven't done it yet um it was busy enough but, but they are now so be quick because we're only going to get a certain number because i don't want to be left with 500 calendars or something daft like that so we're going to go for a sellout so they're on the website now so be quick this is today's birthday bumper. So Kieran McLaughlin lives in Australia. It's actually his birthday thing on the 4th, but his girlfriend or his wife sent it today. So you're going to get it today in case you forget on the 4th. Uh, Tiki Bamford is 30. Adam, uh, Ian Blades, Simon Dempster, Caroline Eustace. So Caroline used to live at Brookhouse Farm for 40 years. Years ago, her dad used to live there, you see. 
Phil Patch, Alex Strachan, Texas Janet and Rory Larkworthy. Now there was a Rory yesterday that I couldn't pronounce because the Irish spell things really funny. Have you seen how they spell Siobhan? There's quite a funny uh, thing that Lee Mack has done on YouTube. If you put Lee Mack pronunciations of names, you'll see him talking about Irish names and how they're spelled. It's quite funny. Um, yeah, I think that's everyone. So happy birthday if you're not on there. And um, look at that, £11,802. So nearly £12,000 just from doing birthday shout outs. And it doesn't seem five minutes since it hit 10 grand. So it's nearly £2,000 just in the last few weeks. So amazing. Thank you. Right, that's probably it for today. So I will see you all tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll be in the farm in the morning and I'm traveling to the Isle of Man. We're going to go and look at some farms. There's a rally on out there and then I'm talking at an NFU event on Saturday night out there as well. So um, if you live in the Isle of Man, let me know. We might be able to call in on you. Leave it in the comments. Rob's got some videos from some of the tractors that they're doing up at Barclay Williams where he's been getting the parts today. Anyway, I'll show you them tomorrow because I probably won't be able to do much filming in the morning because obviously I've got a plane to catch.